Hi all, and welcome to my channel, Fred Makes Things, and a little life update for you today. Couple of quick disclaimers. If this is your first video of mine you are clicking on, um, this video probably doesn't make a lot of sense or won't really matter to you or whatnot. This is primarily a sewing and crafting channel, um, and I talk about my life um, very rarely. So this is a, a, a one-off. It's not really a one-off. I do a couple of these a year. But anyway, um, just know this this is not my usual content. Uh, disclaimer number two. Um, it's a sad one. Uh, it's talking about loss in my family, how that's affecting me. And disclaimer number three, I guess, is you are going to be watching me clean my sewing machine as I do this. The light burnt out um, on me, I don't know, like a week ago, a couple weeks ago, um, and I decided to take the opportunity to clean the machine, um, film it, because I knew I was going to be doing a life update in December. I usually do, um, but I didn't realize that it was going to be as heavy as it is. So um, watch me clean my sewing machine as I talk and I'm sure I'm going to go on for a bit. So either I will start the machine over again or I'll insert video of something else. Um, at this point in time, I don't know what I'm going to be doing. But anyway, uh, let's talk life update. So um, in, at the end of July, uh, I ended up missing an upload of one of my sewing videos. I just didn't have the heart to make one. And in the community post that I posted, I said, um, things have happened and I'll give you an update soon. But I never really found the time to do the update. Uh, but I'll, I'll update you all now. Um, at the end of July, um, my stepmother passed away. Um, she was older. I don't know how old exactly she was. She never disclosed her age to me, but um, I do know she was older than my father when I was 10 and he left my mother for her. She had already had a grown daughter who had um, children of her own. So um, my dad was, I think, around 40 and she I think was somewhere in her 50s but I don't know it doesn't really matter um but he'd been with her for 30 years and um which was a lot longer than he had been with my mother and they had a a, a good relationship I guess I don't know she um she wasn't the greatest person to me or my sister um, life living with her was a struggle. Uh, she caused a lot of, um, emotional, um, psychological damage on my soul, on my psyche, that is taking a very, very long time to unravel. She created some really, um, not great habits in me, um, a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, a lot of the reasons that I am the way that I am as an adult can almost be directly attributed to her. Um, and but way back in 2009, I want to say 2008, my husband and I moved in together in 2009. So in 2008, um, she would finally had her breaking point with me and um, cut me off of the family entirely. Uh, I lost access to my father. Um, she kicked me out a couple of times in the past. We'd had issues growing up that I'm not going to get into here. Um, but in 2008, Christmas of, or New Year's, I guess, of 2008, um, she decided that was it. Uh, she was done with me. I was uh, 25. 26 at the time, 25. And um, yeah, that was it. 
and no amount of groveling or begging to come back into the family helped. So she cut me off from my father, uh, my stepsister, and her three daughters. Um, so I lost access to my nieces. I lost access to that entire like part of the family. Um, and it was hard. It was really hard. And I've tried over the years to like get back into their lives, but she just didn't want me or my dad didn't want me or whatever situation it just they didn't want me so I made my husband's family and um parts of my mother's family my family and I kind of tried to move on but then um I was informed that she'd passed and that hit me really hard because there's like no closure there and my sister ended up making up with them, so she's heavily involved in my father's life now, but I'm not. And um, when given the opportunity to reach out to me and to ask me to come home and to be there for him or anything like that, he chose not to. And so I sat here in Connecticut um, when the rest of my family was in uh, Alberta, Canada, and I got to see the Facebook updates of it being like a mini family reunion and I just got to see all of that from afar. And it hurt. And it launched me into a pretty terrible depression that I just started coming out of. Um, yeah, so I didn't really want to talk about it before now. And I don't really want to talk about it now. But that kind of feeds into the next thing that's just happened. So, I have a younger sister. We're 13 months apart, and we fight. We don't get along. We had a falling out over my mother's death, and I chose at that time to stay out of her life because we both do much better when we're not in each other's lives. And she um, had some children, and... Um, because of circumstances uh, in her youth, in our youth, right? Um, she ended up having them adopted out to a close cousin of ours. And our cousin raised two of her children for her. And she still kind of stayed in contact with them. And everything was going all right, I think. I don't know, I was pretty hands-off. Kind of, again, keeping an eye on things from afar. Um, but recently... Like in the last few days since I think Tuesday I found out. I'm filming this on Friday. Monday or Tuesday I found out that my 15-year-old nephew um, is no longer on this earthly plane. He's passed on. Um, he had gone missing. He'd run away from home, I think. He'd gone missing. Um, the city that um, he was living in put up a bulletin searching for him, and he was found on I, Monday or Tuesday. I don't quite remember now. Um, yeah, so that's bringing up a lot of feelings, too, because he was so young. He was only 15, and he had such a hard start to life, and he had... He had some issues, right, that he was trying to work through that were not his fault, that were thrust upon him, right, when he was forming in my sister's belly, right, that he had to deal with and stuff, and now he's gone, 15 years old, and he's no longer here. I'd seen him a few times when he was a baby. I got to meet him just after my cousin adopted him. I haven't seen it, like, I haven't been physically in his presence in, like, a decade. Um, it's hard when he lives in a city that I don't live in, that I rarely go to visit. Um, right? For a while there, I was living in France, and now I'm in Connecticut. And he's again in Alberta, 
right? Him and his older sister and his younger brother, they all live in um, Alberta. And so I don't see them very often, but I do follow like their progress and stuff on Facebook. And right, what his adoptive mother has to say. And now I've, I've lost the opportunity to see him grow up and to try to like create a relationship with him. And my heart's just broken. It's broken for him, his mother, my sister, like all the whole situation is just absolutely awful. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm heading back to Canada early. Uh, in a previous video, I said I'm leaving December 18th or 19th, but now I'm leaving on Wednesday, whatever d that day is. Um, I'm going to try to get as much pre-filmed as I can. I can guarantee that my husband is going to be taking some photos of some unboxings and then I'm going to voice over those. Those are always fun. Hopefully there won't be a blip in my uploads for this month because um, I'd been really good about pre-filming things and getting them edited so that um, I wasn't as overwhelmed or stressed as I was last year. But yeah, heading home so that I can go to his funeral and see some of the family that I didn't get to see at my stepmother's funeral. And then of course today my sister messages me, even though she hasn't talked to me at all about any of this, she got mad at me over um, a message surrounding my stepmother. And she took a comment that I had made the wrong way and got mad at me and cut me off again. And she just messaged me. She didn't tell me about the passing of my nephew. She let some random friend of hers message me to tell me. And I nearly lost my mind. But luckily enough, one of my uncles actually had found out and he told me privately before this random stranger that I don't know dropped news like that that I wouldn't have been prepared for. But yeah, because we're so close in age, she knows how to trigger me and push my buttons like nobody else on this planet can. Like, and when I'm in her presence, I turn into like a 13-year-old girl. It's absolutely awful. Like, I love her. I love her so much, it hurts at times. And I care so much about what happens to her and her family. But it's just so hard to see her, or to talk to her, or to interact with her. But anyway, um, I got a message today asking me to um, call my dad or send my number along so he could call me because he's really struggling and he's really having a hard time. And it made me so angry and so upset because it's like, what about me? What about the struggles I've gone through, the hard times I've had, the good times I've had? Like, I've missed so much right? My niece had children. I never got to meet them. I graduated university. He didn't come. He told me he couldn't come. He didn't even know the day. Um, he, he wasn't there for my grandmother when my, or when my grandmother passed. He wasn't there when my mother passed. When I told him about my mother passing, he said, well, how's your sister doing? Take care of your sister. No questions about me, how I'm doing. A week after my mother passed, I got married. He wasn't there. He never even responded to the invitation and pretended like he didn't know what I was talking about when I asked him on the phone about it. He didn't care that I moved to France. He didn't care that I moved back here to the United States. Like, he's never been there. He hasn't been there for me. So, like, how, how am I supposed to be there for him now? Like, no, like, nobody's asked me. I shouldn't say nobody, but he he doesn't care how I'm handling the loss of my nephew, right? My sister doesn't think that I have feelings or something. She's never asked me how I'm doing, right? And, like, I know it's way worse for her and for, right, my cousin, his adoptive mother. Like, this isn't about me, but I have feelings. I'm a person, too. Anyway, 
That's the life update. My husband's good. My cats are good. I'm going to be good. But I'm not there yet. I don't know when I will be. Christmas is going to be interesting. I'm going to um one of my aunt's house for Christmas rather than going with my husband's family. Just because I need to have that closeness with my aunt to be with my family. Since 2008, I've always spent... Or 2008, I should say. 2008 was the last year that I spent with anybody on my side of the family for Christmas or for any holiday. And so this year I'm going to um, go to their farm and spend it with them because I think I need that closeness. Um, but other than that, the rest of the time that I'm in Edmonton, I'm going to see my friends and hang out and um, enjoy life in what feels like the frozen tundra. And I'm going to go to this funeral next Saturday. And then I'm going to be there for my cousin, the adoptive mom. I'm going to be there for any family or friends that show up. And I'm going to be there for myself too. Because not only am I like mourning the loss of a relationship, of the potential for a relationship with my nephew, that I'd always held out hope for but I'm it's also the loss of my nephew in general right like a 15 year old boy just gone it's just awful but I'm sorry that this video is so sad I didn't mean to trauma dump but there you have it um Everything from now on should be better, right? Lord knows what the funeral is going to look like. And whether or not I'm going to be able to handle my sister. But I have family coming down with me who care about me. And so everything should be fine. Everything will be fine. But anyway, so yeah. Um, if you've made it to the end of this, thank you so much. I'm really sorry it was such a downer. Like I said, I try not to talk too much about my personal life. Um, but I thought that this time around, maybe speaking it out into the world to people on the internet might be a bit cathartic for me. Because, well, my husband's heard it a million times. And the family that I'm closest to already know where I'm coming from. But I'm sitting by myself in a room, talking it out, and maybe that'll make me feel better. Sorry if it made you feel worse. Anyway, um, this will be the only sad video that I do, hopefully, for a long time. Um, what are we looking at next week? Monday we are doing uh, a shortened version of my uh, resin review. Because I didn't get as much done in that this week at all. Actually, to be honest, I haven't done anything with that this week. Uh, Tuesday is like another one of the paint by number canvas or diamond painting canvases. Wednesday is hopefully Sower's Club if I get it in on time. If not, then it's I already have another video that I can put up for that. Um, and then on we go with the rest of the videos. Um, in these 24 days of videos, there should be a sewing area, sewing room tour. There is going to be some unboxings. Um, and I don't know what else. I can't think of anything else right now. Oh, a bunch of rapid time lapses or time lapses of the projects that I worked on this year. Um, and other than that, I'm not too sure. But I do have 24 videos planned and over half of them um, recorded. So that's pretty good. So yeah, um, I'm going to go. I'm going to say thank you so much for watching or listening to me, as the case may be. And I will talk with you again soon. Bye! Bye!